Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to our daily creative challenge. Uh, I want to give a special shout out and a special happy pride to all of our LGBTQIA plus community that is watching around the world. Happy pride, everyone. Um, and thanks for joining us here on the stream for the daily creative challenges. My name is Andrew Hockrottle and I will be your chef, your guide and your Adobe mentor over the next week. Um, if you are new here, we've spent a whole week together already. Um, all of the friends here. Hello, Jennifer. Juratima's here, Nick's here, Steve Festivus Casaboom, uh, still one of my favorites. Um, we are going to be hanging out, we're going to be doing these daily creative challenges, and it is going to be a very fun time, I think so. Um, namaste, hello, hello from India, very fun, Christelle's here. So we will be continuing on in our daily creative challenges. We have been doing these every day for the last week, and we are going through this week as well, all the way up until Friday, um, doing some more uh, chef-themed or um, restaurant-themed, cooking-themed maybe, daily creative challenges. So if you want to follow along with me, hello, introduce myself again. My name is Andrew Hockrattle. You can follow along here on Behance, um, hawk.co or Instagram or Twitter right there as well. Reach out, post your work, tag me, let me know that you're doing the challenges um, and having a great time doing it. I love seeing your work pop up in my feeds. It makes me very happy. Uh, another way that you can get involved is to go here, bit.ly slash AI Discord. Oh, a little quiet. Um, let me let me try this. Hold, please. There we see. All right. Am I a little bit? Is that a little bit better? A little, little better for audio. Um, let me know if that works better. I can fix it too. Um, if we still have issues, but. Yes, um, we are continuing on. You can join our communities bit.ly slash AI Discord. That will allow you to get into our Discord where we are having fun conversations, where we're talking, where we're posting our work. And let me take you over there real quick to show you what's going on in Discord. In Discord, there we go. Um, people are putting their challenges over here in the challenge tab. Um, we have someone who literally just posted at King Tut. Uh, very cool, great illustration there. We've been baking bread, we've been making logos. Absolutely love this Radical Slice logo. Um, very, very fun. So you can post your work here. And tonight at 8 p.m., I'll be going live on my Behance, um, which you can follow along and it will notify you. And I will be going... <coughs> Oh my goodness, it snuck up on me, guys. Sorry. So sorry about that. Um, I'll be going live on my Behance doing reviews of your projects tonight, 8 p.m. Set a reminder for that. Um, now, if you are uh, just tuning in and you're like, oh my goodness, what, what did I tune into? Well, let me tell you, boy, let me tell you. You are here for the Daily Creative Challenges. This is when in Illustrator, we do a challenge every day, come together every day at 11.30 a.m., which it is pretty close to right now. Um, and we are going to be doing challenges every day. You can go to behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator, and that will take you to this page. Uh, on this page, you can click this button here to get involved in our discord or to sign up for notifications for those challenges. You also can come down here and you can watch the replays from last week. Um, the pies and charts was a personal favorite, so you can go back and watch that. And today we're working on menu designs. You can get our source file here um, at behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. Thank you, Wade, for dropping that link. Uh, one more thing that I want to talk about real quick is the Adobe Community Fund. Adobe is giving back to the creative community and investing back into us, the creative community. Um, they are financing projects from anywhere from $500 to $5,000. All you need to do is submit your proposal. You also can apply for a commission from Adobe that doesn't require a proposal. Um, it's just a project that they'll put you on that you can do um, to hopefully make some money um, to partner with Adobe and have a great client. So um, you can go ahead and find out that information in the link that someone's going to drop in chat for me because I can't copy and paste right now. Thanks, Mom. Love you guys. Um, all right. So, hi. Hello. We talked a lot. That was pretty fast. And if you are just joining us, um, I like to do something called infotainment. So we have a little bit of entertainment and a little bit of information. And today we're going to be mixing both of those through the lens of cooking. It's one of my favorite things that we're talking about today, and that is typography. We will be laying out a menu and we'll be using Adobe fonts. We'll be using tracking, kerning, the character panel um, in Adobe Illustrator to show you the power of syncing things through the cloud of type hierarchies um, and all that fun stuff. So if you want to learn about type, keep watching. Um, and in that case, I think it's time to go to Hawk's Kitchen.
Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Let me get this mic back in here. Um, let me know if that mic volume is good. Bonjour. Uh, today we are going to be making our menus for Hawk's Kitchen, uh, the hottest new restaurant on the strip. Um, we are going to hop into Illustrator and we will be making those uh, today. If you want to follow along, you can open Illustrator or you can go to behance.net slash challenge slash Illustrator and download our source file, which we're going to hop over into right now. So the things we're going to be paying attention today are hierarchy and then using Adobe fonts to sync fonts across platforms. Um, very, very easy. So um, yes, Colby, it makes me hungry too. Um, I, I very much have food near me as well. Uh, so let's hop over into Illustrator. I'm going to read our prompt for today and then give you guys um, our little uh, our little uh, prompt. So was that gluten-free? Um, I believe that it was. I actually grew those peaches and apples on the tree in my backyard. So we made it from scratch, scratch. Um, layout and design. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm reading this as a prompt. Sorry, I'm trying to read in chat as I do this. So, layout a design layout and design a menu using type tools. Um, as you design, focus on type hierarchy, tracking, and kerning. That's what we're going to be paying attention to today. We'll be using all the type tools, including the character palette, um, the uh, type tool, uh, literally called the type tool, and uh, merging with Adobe fonts. So uh, today, our little fun quip is try the great stuff. It's delicious. Um, from, of course, Beauty and the Beast. So it felt right for today's challenge. So when I'm working with type, we're gonna talk a little theory here. I never go straight into um, using the type. I always wanna map it out. And if you think about laying out typography, um, especially in an editorial way or even with menus, if you think about it as rectangles and simple shapes, it makes it a lot easier for you to lay out things on the page and establish your hierarchy before you even look at the actual fonts that you're gonna use. So we're gonna start mapping that out. And I want you to do this. And then actually when you post in Behance, show me your wireframe as well as the finished product. So show me a little bit of both. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go in here and I know that I want to have the title of my restaurant, Hawk's Kitchen, um, up here at the top. So we're just going to make a gray box and start kind of mapping out the places that we want things. Um, I'm going to make some guides real quick, turning on the ruler sitting command R. And then with these guides, oops, I have my guides turned off. There we go. Oh, look at this. I've made guides for you guys already. Wow. Too good to you. Um, we are going to go ahead and uh, make those guides just so we have uh, exactly where we want it to be. And I'm going to put one in the middle of these two as well, just so I know where it is. Boop, one there and one over here. If you guys hear a little bit of screaming in the background, if that's a child, um, it's a very sad baby going down for a nap. So uh, don't be alarmed. Uh, Tis but a baby. So I'm going to mapping out kind of the... Uh, idea of where I want to put things, right? When you're doing wireframes, you want to make sure that everything's balanced before you start actually putting in the typography. So I know maybe I want a line divider to go here. Let's go ahead and make one of those. Let's bring this out so that it goes to the ends there. There we go. So I know maybe I want a line divider. And then I start looking at maybe how many columns that I want. So let's go ahead and um, use our pen tool. And I'm going to map out some columns just from the top to the bottom here. And this is a little um, inside look at uh, some align tools that we're going to cover real quick is I'm going to make three copies of this, right? So I know that I want to make columns and I want three columns. So I go like that and I'm like, man, these columns aren't quite the width that I want them. What I can do is I'll bring this over to the furthest right. And as I select all of these, you can come up to your align panel and select align to selection. And then right over here, I just want to make sure you guys can see it. This very last one that has the vertical, but they're next to each other, is going to span them out in between those two. So it lines everything equally within that selection. So now I have some nice little columns, right? Kind of fun. So now I'm going to start laying out where I would want maybe um, my headings and my body copy to go. Um, and yes, this is the grid. Um, I know that I want a little pop out here, so we're going to do this. We're going to do a little pop out. That's going to have a very special recipe in it, um, or maybe a dish that is the chef's choice, per se. I'm going to turn off my guides. There we go. So now maybe I want this, and what we want to do is we want to set um, a text wrap on this. So we're going to go to Object, Text Wrap, and Make. 
and it's just going to add a little space around so that when I add type in, it will kind of go around, um, which should be pretty good. Um, now I know that I want to kind of do a header here and then a little bit of body copy explanation over here, right? And then maybe just underneath, I want a little bit of the price. I'm going to put the price right there. So this is kind of the wireframe that I want for my dishes. Um, there we go. So again, we're talking about type, but we are just doing wireframe right now. So we're just gonna kind of copy this down, shift click and holding option or alt, and then command D is going to do that again. It's just gonna repeat. So I know that I want um, a little bit of body copy. I want something up here that's uh, a little bit bolder and then the menu can be a little bit smaller, less important. So I've kind of laid out this um, and you can do a much more in-depth wireframe when you lay out your menu on both sides. Um, and I'd love to see that when you post on Behance. But knowing that I want a big title up here, we're gonna start looking at type. When we look at typography, we want it to be a hierarchy, which means that the most important stuff is the biggest, the boldest, and then it kind of scales down from there. So we're gonna do the title up here, and I want it to kind of have a newspaper feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and type out Hawk's Kitchen. There we go. Uh, and I'm gonna place that right where I need it over this wireframe in the center here. Nice and big, delete that wireframe. And here, um, what we can do is we're gonna start messing around and playing with how to find some good type. So I'm gonna open my character panel, hitting Command T, um, and up here, let's see, where do we want this? Let's put it down here. We can start um, going through the fonts that I have installed, right? Right here, we can just drag through, and it will actually update in real time as I scroll over these to these different fonts that I want. Now I know something that I want something um, that is almost a black letter, right? That is um, a little bit more rustic, like something like Cloister. So what I can do is I can come in and look at my creative cloud. I can go to find more right here in the character panel and I can start to filter. So we're gonna clear all and I want something like this. It's a black letter, right? So I can filter just to the black letter. There we go. Uh, and I want something that's maybe a little bit thicker, so I can click on this thick one. Um, and then let's say that I want something that's a little um, wide in the middle. There we go. So I have used these tools that are um, completely built in to Illustrator to sync Adobe fonts um, all the way through the cloud. And now I can find a font that I like. It will live update so that I can see. There we go. And I actually like this one right here. So... Uh, Fakir Pro, and what I can do is I can click on this little cloud, and that cloud is gonna start syncing. You can see that it has the arrows that it's syncing across, and syncing that across is now downloading that font into my library so that I can use it, and all I have to do now is click, and now it is live and active in my document, right? Kinda cool. Um, super easy and quick way to incorporate new and more fonts into um, your documents. So there we go, we have our header, up there and now let's start working on some type hierarchy. Now when you're talking about type hierarchy, you want three levels usually. You want heading one and below that you want to have a subhead and then you want your body copy. We can start with those three. There are a lot else, there are a lot of other ones that you can put in there like a deck, um, but we're gonna start with those three. And what we want is you wanna pay attention to what you wanna communicate. Try to read it in your head and think about how am I reading this in my head and does it match with how I would like to communicate that idea. So the heading, we want our restaurant to be classy and refined. So I want the heading to be something that feels a little more, um, I don't know, French, right? It feels kind of French. So we're gonna to go to clear again. And I know for me, French is this kind of serif feels more refined. Um, so technically serifs tend to be more refined. Sans serifs are much more modern. So I want something that's refined. Um, and let's go ahead and click here on this sheriff, on this serif, on the sheriff. And I want something that does have a difference in uh, vertical and horizontal. This is actually called a fat face typeface. Um, so something like Bodoni, I actually think I like this. So Bodoni's here, let's see, there are a bunch of options to Bodoni, um, and I wanna play around with some of these options. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, I already have Bodoni. 
Oh, let's go to find more. Let's do that. There we go. Um, let's find something that looks like... Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's fun. So belly display regular. Again, we just click on this little cloud. Once we find something that we like, uh, we are in the find more tab. It is going to sync that font with those little arrows. And in just a second, it turns into an X, which means to desync it, but it means that we have it in our library. So we're gonna click on it and there we go. We have our heading one. Oops. We have our heading one right there. Now, when we go to a subhead, um, a lot of people talking about InDesign challenges. Um, that would be fun. Yeah, let Adobe know. Let us know in chat. They're always listening, always looking for new ideas. Um, InDesign challenges could be super fun. Um, and yes, yeah, somebody talked about data merging. I can definitely show you how to data merge. Um, and maybe if you turn into my stream tonight, maybe I'll show you how to data merge. Um, so coming into our subhead, the subhead, we want something that's complementary. Um, we either go completely different or something that is a nice complement. So it's either a big contrast um, or a nice complement. Here, I want something that's a little bit lighter, um, and so it looks like this might actually have a, another version. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and see um, it doesn't. So what we can do for the subhead is we're thinking of something that has these maybe sharp serifs or maybe something that has a similar width um, of distance or height. So let's come in and look for something real quick in our find more that we feel like pairs well. Um, and again, you want something that is a little bit different, that is either um, not as thick or is uh, much thicker. Oh, let's actually, let's do this, Adobe Text Pro. So this is something that has a nice, oops, go ahead and sync that. Um, it's something that has a nice serif, but it's not as sharp. And it looks like the letters have a similar height. So we want it to kind of vibe together. I and mean, with that similar height, even though it has a little bit of a different width, it could work. So we're going to now have our subhead and then body copy. Usually you want to be a serif um, and a small serif is your eyes will follow those serifs along the pathway. So it makes it much easier for you to read. So let's come in here. And again, we're just going to scroll through and I'm actually going to do Baskerville old face. Hmm. Actually, let's do this. Let's see, is there a non-bold version of this? No. Nope. Okay, so let's do Capitolium. Um, and this scales down. You want your body copy to be readable at a very small size. So there we go. We have all three kind of leveled up. And I'd love to see this when you post on Behance as well. And now we can kind of start posting over some of this wire framework so that we can actually put in titles. Um, so we're going to scale stuff as we go and then kind of set that for what it needs to be. And again, we're trying to fill in these wireframes that we had um, mapped out. So this is going to be the gray stuff. Uh, we want this to come down a little bit so that it fits. So I'm just going to set it at 22. There we go. And we want our price to be in that subhead. So I'm going to grab the subhead over here. We're going to shrink it down and this is going to be the gray stuff will be um, $45. It's expensive gray stuff. We're going to place that in our little placeholder right here. There we go. And alignment, we can align to the right, which is what we want to do. We'll align that right to the right. And then we want to add in some description copy. And I'm going to do the body copy here, but I'm going to grab the type tool, which is just T right here. And I'm going to click and drag a box out. And you'll see that it starts to fill with um, what we call placeholder text. So we're going to copy this, make sure we have the right one. I'm going to take it down to about eight. Pretty small. Um, and if you want to fill it with more placeholder text, you can go to type and fill with placeholder text. Uh, that is going to just fill in all of that space with text so that you can see what it looks like. So there we go. Now we have that. We can delete our placeholders. Oops deleted our actual content, delete our placeholders. And there we go. Now we have something that is um, fully, uh, yes, it's a wireframe. Yes. So this is um, a hierarchy that kind of flows together that as we start to lay this out and put more in here, will hopefully continue to work. So now I want to show you what happens with this text wrap, right? We've created this text wrap. Um, and as we put something here, you'll see that even though my text box goes over, this text is being pushed by this square. We did that by going to selecting the square and going to object, text wrap, and make 
up here. You can also change the options so that as we preview this, um, it will start to kind of push the letters further and further out um, to maybe create a little call out, to create a special space. And the great thing about this is that if we wanted to, we could have a special right in here. So let's say that we had a very special um, dish and that special dish was um, just yummy, tummy stuff. Um, so we can actually make that text box and if we put it on top, it will float above. If we put it below, it will start to push that um, it will start to push that with the wrap. So if we put it on top um, by going, clicking right, arrange, bring to front, it will bring it all the way on top and you can see that it is wrapping this text underneath, but because this is on top, it's coming to the forefront, right? Kind of cool. So um, I want you guys to play around and lay out your menus. Play around with a big header, figure out what your heading is, what your subheading is, and what your body copy is. Maybe show me a wireframe today, and then be sure to post that in our Discord. So I know we went over a lot today, kind of jumped around a little bit, but the goal is for you to play around with type and I wouldn't use more than three typefaces on this one. Um, try to establish that hierarchy. You want something that works together that as you read it, it feels like it has the right voice and tone that you're trying to communicate with your message. So you also could maybe do a fun ad on the other side, or you can lay out all of your menu items, um, which would be very, very fun. So thanks so much. Um, let's talk a little bit about what is coming up and some other ways. Uh, as always, you can get connected with me if you have questions in our Discord by going to bit.ly slash AI Discord. Uh, you can get connected there. Um, and in our Discord, again, people are posting their work, which is what I want you to do. Lay out your menus, post your work, and let me know what you're working on and how it's looking. Um, now, today's not the end of the day. Today is not the end of the stream. We have five more days of this all the way to Friday, which will be very, very fun. Um, but coming up next today is our friend Julie Sandusky. Um, Andrea Hawk is doing the XD challenges as well right after that, uh, continuing on with us. Then we have Alice Lee with some doodle therapy at the end of the day. Is it better that we choose a title heading one font for the font of the logo? Um, you can use a font that you've used in the logo or you can do something completely different. Um, I like to do something completely different or kind of augment that so that it doesn't match exactly with what I'm doing up top. So um, this is what's coming up. We will be live again every single day, 1130 a.m. right here, behance.net slash live. And again, if you want to follow along, I'll be live tonight on my Behance um, doing some branding work and doing reviews for your uh, daily challenges. So thanks so much. Let's do our quick recap. If you've ever come to my stream, you know, at the end, we like to do a recap of everything that we talked about so that nothing gets forgotten. So hold on to your hats, put on your chef jackets, and let's go through our recap. So today we had the challenge to lay out and design a menu system using the type tools. As we designed, we focused on type hierarchy, tracking, and kerning. So we tried the gray stuff and it was delicious. We went through and laid out some grids to make sure that our menus were on point, um, that everything was exactly where it needed to be tonight, uh, today. Sorry, I'm reading the chat as I talk. Uh, so then we went through and started looking at fonts using our character panel. In the character panel, we selected find more and that enabled Adobe fonts to sync seamlessly between the cloud and our document. Um, we made some decisions about our type that we were using to where we had a heading, a subhead and a body copy. Um, for these, we used a serif because it's much easier to read a serif at small sizes. So we wanted a contrast to where our heading is the most important thing in our hierarchy, so it is the thickest. And then as we move down, it got thinner and thinner, um, going down to the body copy, which is readable, but less important at small sizes. So then we went over and laid things out. We worked with some text wrap by going to object 
and text wrap make uh, so that we could have a very special dish that pops out of that menu. So that's what we created today. And I can't wait to see what you all create tonight um, or even tomorrow if you're watching this or sometime in the future. If you're living in the future, thanks for watching this stream. Um, so thanks everyone for hanging out. Make sure you stick around next for our friend um, uh, Julia Sandusky, I believe it is. Let me t double check. Yes, Julia Sandusky uh, is coming up next. So stick around for that. And I will see you again tonight at 8 p.m. or tomorrow at 11 30 same time same place um adios and have a good one bye